when we started out some three years ago, we could not have foreseen that the book would be fresh out of the printer at a time where the world face is faced with a poverty situation that has been severely aggravated due to the past 15 months with the COVID-19 crisis. Years of work eradicating extreme poverty has been brushed away at all continents. This will be the agenda item number one on the global agenda. To, and it will be the responsibility of the global community to address it in the coming years. And we already see it unfolding in discussions on a new social contract, new global deal, build back better, build forward fairer. Whatever the rhetorical frame will be on this gigantic task for the international community, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as well as uh, the human rights instruments that we have at hand will be at the core of the challenge. Um, the project began about three years ago, as Morton said, but it got a boost in 2019 when a number of the contributors were able to come together in Washington, D.C. for a panel at the annual Law and, Soci Law and Society Association Conference. And over time, the project grew to a book with 35 chapters from leading experts uh, from around the world. Uh, we really made an effort to cover a wide range of issues relating to poverty and human rights, which is, of course, already a pretty broad topic. Um, the, our limitation was that there was only a certain number of pages that could be bound together into a single book. And, and so we tried to include as much as possible within that, that one constraint that we had. The authors include activists like Alfred Brownell, writing on land rights in East Africa, as well as sort of activist academics like Philip Alston, who contributed a forward, and Gay McDougall, um, who analyzed global responses to race, racism, and poverty. Um, in some ways, I think the lockdowns and the slower pace that we all you know, had to put up with for a while contribute to the, contributed to the depth of the volume. It means that uh, poverty policies are based on human rights standards and principles, and the priorities of duty bearers in the poverty domain are settled in dialogue with poor uh, people and their representations. Climate change, uh, like with COVID, will exacerbate poverty and other conditions of vulnerability. Poverty, human rights, and climate change are interlinked. Uh, both are human rights, uh, both climate change and poverty are human rights issues. They are global issues with localized consequences, and both can undermine people's ability to enjoy rights. So the enjoyment of many of the rights uh, that are protected under international human rights law could be undermined because of the um, consequences of climate change. Two things are certain and have been exposed dramatically during the pandemic. First, that governments have failed to effectively implement the right to housing. All the way up to the pandemic and well through the pandemic. And the second thing that I am certain of is that governments have not been held accountable for the misery and inequality they have created through their unswerving commitment to a neoliberal agenda. Human rights have been for many, many years uh, a common language for social movements to raise their grievance and to challenge um, and to challenge injustice and inequality. But for sure, we have to ask uh, what will go for social movements and for uh, social protest and mobilization around rights with these new circumstances. Because you would see, for example, um, also governments that in the name of protecting health and protecting security, also restricting fundamental rights as to mobilize in order to, to advocate for rights. Mm -hmm.